Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck, and this is The Thunder Show, AKA WLTV, America's number one video wine show. So today we are going to do the impregnable, as Mike Tyson would say, Brunello di Montalcino. And uh, Montalcino and is a wonderful, interesting, cool climate area in Italy, of Tuscany making some very profound wines and Brunello is something people can't get enough of. I mean, I just had so many people email me asking me to do Brunellos and so we're gonna do another show on four Brunellos which I'm excited about because these wines always make my palate tingle and smile. Ting! So, I'm excited about that and before anything else, I just want everybody to know that I would like you to friend me up on corked.com because some cool stuff is gonna happen and if you're my friend, before the cool stuff happens, you will probably benefit in the area of $723.19 worth of currency. So I really, I recommend it. We're having fun. You can put some notes there and a lot of stuff is coming soon, so big up for that. Also, everybody that badged me up, here comes the collage. We're gonna put it at the end and we're gonna put it behind some music from a very good friend and a huge maniac, Tony Vincent. And the reason we're doing that for all the Tony Vincent head and the Vincent world and all that stuff, it is his birthday today. So happy birthday, mate. You're a good friend of the shows. You're a good friend of mine. You're a good person. And if there's any other Vaniacs that have the music talent, Tony's pretty good. You'll see at the end with the collage. Mix it up, mop. Go a little DJ on it. Go to do a little wacky whack stuff. We're gonna have some fun with that. But if you're a music guy or gal, you got a little tunes in you, send in some stuff. We'll definitely give you a shout out on WLTV. We love spreading the thunder into all medias. Maybe you're an actor. Maybe you throw up the WL in a commercial, a national commercial or something like that. Anyway, here we go. Let's get right into it. Obviously, I'm already getting loopy because I tasted a bunch of wine. Then I've done episodes and I've got two more to go. And by Thursday and Friday, folks, tomorrow and the next day's episodes could get real interesting. La Guerla, 2001. Brunello di Montalcino, 92 points spectator, 38 US dollars. Very good on paper. I'm excited about this. Now this is made from Sangiovese from the Brunello clone. Um, you know, Brunellos are really, really quite interesting wines, really profound wines, uh, really the wine of Tuscany. And so uh, I'm excited about having this. Um, really nice color again, no doubt. Let's give it a little sniffy sniff. Now I love Sangiovese because you always get that tar and, and leather and, and you know sour cherry and always a little bit of bitterness and kind of zinginess to it, which make the wines very intriguing to me. Very nice, uh, you know, basic nose, you know, dark cherry, get a little bit of tar in this, which is nice, but very basic Sangio nose, you know, really exactly what you expect. Floral as always, uh, which I like. Let's give it a whirl. All right, that hurt. Got a little spit bucket juice in my eye. That's fun, off to a good start. Slobbering all over myself. Um, this one's nice. Um, actually has a very, very nice palatable uh, What is that? Hold on a second. The, the thing in the eye got me. Really firm tannins, great acidity structure in this wine. I like the overall, it's got a leather, venison, vegetal component. It's, it's got some really, it's almost salty and peppery in comparison to sugary and fruity. Um, really, a, it's got a great grip, great attack on the palate. I really like this wine. This is the kind of wine I would love to have with dinner. By itself is maybe a little bit too harsh. This is the kind of wine that I would love to pair with let's say a game hen or, 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 or something of that nature, maybe a roasted quail. I'm just thinking of small birds for some reason on this wine. I like this wine. Uh, it's, got, it's got some nice leather components too on the finish which is quite nice. A little hint of venison with pepper. We're getting to that t-shirt concept, you know, with the strawberries and the venison. Some nice wine, well made. Integrated nicely. Uh, I'm gonna give it kudos. I I'm not gonna go crazy on it. I think Spectator went a little high on it. I'm gonna go 90 points on this wine. Good, standard, solid entry Brunello if you wanna get into the game. 
This is a wine that you should seek out. 38 Bones is very respectable for the price of Brunello as they do have to sit in oak for three or five years depending if they're regular or reserva. Uh, so that really you know, kind of takes the price to a different level given the fact that you know, they're sitting on the dollars, it becomes a little economic there. So you know, 38 bucks is actually a very fair price for a very intriguing wine. Not, as you can tell, the energy for me is not overwhelming. I almost could possibly give it a pass, but it is good entry level if you want to say, hey, I've had a Brunello, which is something people want to do. Pian Pinello, uh, Pian Cornello, excuse me, 2001 Brunello, 91 points wine spectator, also 38 US dollars. And this is a very good producer that has made some really good wine. I really like the Rosso di Montalcino, which is, you know, their entry level at the $20 range. Let's give this a whirl. Again, some color. And there you go. Let's give it a little sniffy sniff. Ah, this is much more interesting. This has a lot more going for it on the nose. Can I go backwards? Can I go? I'm gonna give this wine 88 plus points. All right, I'm back. Just, you know, just didn't feel it. After after really reanalyzing it, just didn't feel it. Anyway, this has a beautiful bouquet. Um, what I love about this, it's got a candy cane aspect. Uh, I get a very obvious peppermint component, which is really intriguing to me. Beautiful integration of black currant and blackberries on this wine. A uh, little hint of pepper, really intriguing. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is good stuff. Very focused. I really like the overall mouthfeel. Very clean. Clean fruit. Silky flavors. Uh, I'm getting little hints of pepper which are quite intriguing. A nice rush of like red and black fruit coming together. Blackberries, currant, red, red beautiful cherries. I mean, pretty cherries. This is a very well-made wine, very polished, quite, quite complex for a wine with a medium to full-bodied entry. Really nice long finish. I love the bouquet. I love the finish. I love really a lot about this wine. I'm gonna go 91 plus points on this, and that's really why I had it just at like I just didn't, you know. So anyway, let's go 91 plus on this. I think the spectator hit the nail on the head. This is a really well-made, extremely intriguing bottle of wine. Let's move on. This is the Colacetto, 2001. Brunello, 92 points, Antonio Galani, who writes for Robert Parker, 40 US dollars. What I like about San Giovese is, you know, you're getting a much different experience than you would out of Cabernet or, or uh, Shiraz. As you can see, you get almost like a roasted red color, not the black inky colors that you get out of a lot of the modern day New World grapes. The other thing is you're, you're getting much more vegetal and tar driven. I almost get like a rustiness on this nose, which I like quite a bit, but you're getting like oily, mechanical, you know, sour cherry, vegetal, earthy. You're getting a very different array of nose, bouquet, and flavors on the palate, which I think is quite intriguing and so the spice of life. I mean, who wants to drink the same stuff over and over? And I love the trueness to the terroir, to the land of these wines. Brunello's for the most part, except for some here and there, have been very rarely manipulated into these fruit bombs, which I really respect from the area and I've really enjoyed. And again, the prices, Brunello's, good Brunello's were 30 bucks you know, 10 years ago, whereas Cabernet's and Shiraz's have really gotten expensive even past Brunello in price. It's scary to say, but Brunello is almost a value in today's world. Again, this is 40 bucks and just an incredible nose. Really like it. Again, the, I get a rustiness. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl. This kills. Now this is very tannic and very dry, so you have to be aware of that. But however, but however, 
However, this is an extremely polished effort and very world class. I see this wine lasting 10 to 15 years and this is what I want to call a cellar dweller. This is something you definitely want to put into your collection and see what it tastes like in five to seven years because based on the way it's tasting now and based on the tannins that are blocking some of the secondary fruit that I believe is in here, I think this wine could really open up and be the value of a $200 bottle of Brunello. I think this wine has big potential. It's extremely good now, but how scary good can it get? Almost like Grady Sizemore. How good can this get? I mean, this wine is extremely polished. I really like the sour cherry. I like the tar. I, I get a little bit of jam uh, flavors in this. This is I interesting. It's almost got a charcoal component. It's those tar bubbles. I've talked about this a long time ago. Remember when Fresh Pavement, like a uh, is it tar? What is it called? Ca Not tar. Um, asphalt. Asphalt. The Mott coming through again. Saving the show again. Chris Mott. Fresh asphalt. And then if it's done in the summertime, there's little bubbles that form. And if you pop them and put your, you know, your fingers in your mouth and taste that, that's what this tastes like. Now then you run home and cry to mom because you did it and she gives you some sour cherries to eat to take away the flavor. That's really exactly what this tastes like. That is the kind of taste I like, especially when I know I believe this wine will really open up because the dryness and tans are starting to fade away again. Four or five years, this wine has potential to be a mid-90 point wine. Today I'm gonna score this wine 92 points. I like it a lot. I completely agree with Galani on this one. Uh, this is a $40 steal. This is something to very much seek out. Forget about the other two wines. Even if I score this one point, one point lower, there's really no comparison. So I hate ratings. I might, I might give up on ratings completely. But anyway, this wine is kicking butt. Yeah, there is a one point swing, but I got excited, you know. Anyway, Val de Cava, 2000 vintage, which is a very tough vintage. Brunello de Montalcino, 93 points wine enthusiast, and this wine is 90 US dollars. It's expensive. Let's give it a whirl. Man, this was killing. Very intriguing aromatically, probably actually the most interesting of the bunch. This has a poopiness to it. Uh, there's definitely a clear manure aspect to this wine on the nose. This is like going through a crap farm uh, with a couple babies in there crapping on you as well. I mean, there's some crap in this. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There's crap, there's crap in here. Now what's nice is the crap is being surrounded by beautiful, right, massive, you know sometimes you see real big, you know, strawberries. You know the ones that look like they muted, mutated together so it's got like a little like lip at the bottom. Um, really nice on that component as well. But there's some stinkiness. Uh, there, again, like the last wine, there's a charcoal aspect on this wine, um, which I like quite a bit. And poop. Let's give it a whirl. Mm. Though 2001 is known as a far superior vintage, to 2000, this is a clear indication of the pedigree of Val de Cava. As many of you know, the 2001 Val de Cava, I think got 97, 98 points from Wine Spectator, some outlandish number. Uh, I am completely taken aback. I thought honestly that this wine was gonna be a massively overrated, not interesting, going by its pedigree, we're gonna charge you a bunch of money because this is who we are, kind of, and this is not even the reserve, this is the Val, I mean this is extremely, Impressive. By far the most polished and interesting wine of the bunch so far. Um, just more extracted and extremely focused flavors in comparison to the other three, even the last one. Um, this is really good. Real good. Um, Beautiful hints of like barley and like other grainy aspects. I almost feel like grape nuts got thrown into here. Throw a couple of mushrooms and a little fungus action. Give me a piece of escargot as well. That's what's going on in here. Like one little snail. Fun. Um, very solid, well made, very bright fruit surrounding those weird different flavors that I told you. Those are really secondary. Overall, the sour cherry is really the main component of this wine, but the polish and the power and the focus of this wine is really to be commended. I'm a big fan of this wine. I'm gonna go 94 plus points, which is something I never thought a 2000 Brunello would be worth. Now, 
at 90 bucks, this is pretty darn expensive. So it's a coin toss whether you should do it. It's kind of like Two-Faced. Or as AJ's favorite guy, Gilbert Arenas did, he flipped a coin and then went against it. I don't know what you want to do, but this is definitely an expense account line. I know some people email me every time I mention that and say, whoa, 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 I pay the expense accounts. Don't say that. But this is. This is something to seek out. And heck, if you see the 01, definitely jump on that. But the 2000, believe it or not, made me drinking even better because I have had some 01s. It's such a powerful vintage, so tight that the fruit is not really expressing itself yet. It's just, it's almost like it hasn't hit puberty yet. No muscles yet. Or not wearing makeup yet. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway, question of the day. What is your favorite Brunello that you've ever consumed? And part two, have you ever had Brunello and cheese? Tell me what your favorite matchup is because I'm going to be doing a whole lot of that very soon. The fall Brunello and cheese, it can, as they would do, right? Because you and a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Friend me up, aren't we? I've been away for years I nearly lost my mind I had to disappear Cause no one had the time